cloud technology, the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence. The way we work will change dramatically over the next few years. What that means for the industry and how to manage these challenges, I'm talking today in Frankfurt to Uli Hohmann. He is Corporate Vice President Microsoft. My name is Martin Roos. Welcome to TBD Media. Uli, welcome. What are the most pressing challenges manufacturers face today and how are they addressing these challenges? I think everybody has agreed or is agreed that the new technologies like cloud, AI, IoT are necessary to really get to the next step in productivity. The complexity of getting these technologies applied is really the long renewal cycles because investments are high in production or manufacturing and the interoperability required between existing and old equipment to really get the most out of these uh, capabilities. What does it take the manufacturers to capitalize on these promise of these technologies to lead their sector? The way we see successful companies operate is by applying a top-down strategy, meaning the management has to believe that the investment in these technologies will really get the benefits uh, in productivity and other outputs that they're looking at it. The other element we're looking at is you need to think about the partnerships you're going to invest in as part of this top-down strategy because no vendor, no matter who they are, can effectively deliver upon this all alone. But how does smart manufacturing really affect the skills we need today? The shop floor has always been this place where the human and machine interaction uh, is very intense and very important. We believe that upskilling the humans in order to really uh, improve their ability to understand what the technology does and how to interact with it, as well as thinking through how you augment the people, help them do their job better. A great example is quality management, where the humans generally have a pretty good eye. They cannot really measure by millimeters or whatever the measure uh, element is, what the spalt mass between two elements ought to be. Therefore, augmenting this with a camera that can use AI to continuously measure the distance is something that will help improve the quality while at the same time allowing the uh, operator to be more effective at other, the overall quality task. But people around the world, business people around the world, they even fear the loss of control as they see how the industry is changing by digital technologies. How would you uh, address these concerns? The best way to deal with concerns like this is to be transparent. Write down what you're doing, when are you going to do it, and what are you not going to do. Microsoft has, uh, for example, implemented Ethics for AI, which is a set of rules that really allow a Microsoft employee and a Microsoft partner to know exactly how we think about usage of AI, when we're not going to use it, and allows me to effectively have a safe zone of working with my customers, my partners, to say, yes, here's how we believe AI can help, here's how it can be beneficial, and here's where we see areas of concern, and therefore everybody knows how we think about this. We believe actually that community or the society at large needs to start to think about rules like that, ethics of AI, um, to really move forward with these technologies in a safe and consensual way. You're talking every day to manufacturing companies and how do you leverage their feedback to improve or to evolve the Microsoft product development? Well, that's my job and I really enjoy tremendously spending time with our partners, customers to think about this. I think the best and most profound example, especially in this manufacturing context, is the all-up security model. From new chipset designs like Azure Sphere that really build security into the hardware that sits at the, uh, the bottom of any investment in machinery, all the way uh, to enhancing our Azure-focused security center to also include machines, sensors, uh, cars or other IoT scenarios uh, that was really an, an innovation that was driven by our partners and customers. But how would you summarize Microsoft's approach to manufacturing? Our key parts are an open ecosystem and the second part is to think about investments across the globe where our capacity for cloud computing, for example, is now spread into 54 regions. Actually, I think it's 56. 
um, and we're going to add more regions so that we can meet our uh, manufacturing partners demand where they are manufacturing and not where we happen to have a cloud data center. Your strategy is built on openness. What are the advantages? What, what is it actually? Openness for us has a number of elements. First of all, we believe that investing in open standards like OPC UA and OPC Foundation is a key element. The other complementing one is open source. Um, for example, our industrial IoT stack is entirely open sourced so that our partner ecosystem can take a look, uh, participate in improving it and also utilizing it in their own systems. And last but not least, we believe that open data is another element um, of how you really bring together an open ecosystem so that the partners, uh, the manufacturers and um, other elements in the supply chain can work together in a seamless fashion. You co-founded the Open Manufacturing Platform. Why did you do that and what is it exactly? The Open Manufacturing Platform is an alliance of manufacturing companies. People that are effectively building goods are trying to solve similar problems all over the world in all of their plants and factories. And the open manufacturing platform is designed to help those manufacturers apply standards like Industry 4 or utilize OPC foundation investments in driving forward um, their manufacturing productivity. And the output is use cases, reference architectures of really applying these standards in manufacturing contexts so that the industry community that supports those partners can then build products and services around those use cases and reference architectures. Can you give an example, a concrete use case? BMW, as one of the co-founders of OMP, has uh, implemented a great example of how we think uh, this ought to work. Uh, in one of their plants in Germany, they replaced an existing autonomous uh, driving logistics system in-house in the in-factory uh, with a new one, which was composed out of multiple vendors using a mixture of open source and open standards. And these vendors had not necessarily worked together and pre-integrated it. They actually worked in uh, the context of BMW and really built out this end-to-end -end solution in a plug and play uh, kind of fashion. So the future sounds gorgeous. Thank you very much for talking to us and good luck. Thank you.